Hello and welcome to That British Guy. Now in my first video I spoke briefly about the storytelling aspect of professional wrestling and my experiences of that in the 2K games in the story mode. Now a channel called WrestleTalk, what they do over there is they undergo fancy booking warfare whereby they are pitched an idea and the two guys, Ollie and Luke, battle it out. They book that scenario and whoever gets the most votes wins. Now the last topic that they did was booking Asuka's debut to the main roster. And I liked that idea. So what I have done to kind of go up against them as a third option is I have rebooked that myself. So I bring you my version of how WWE should book the main roster debut of Asuka. Now, this is going to start on the episode of Monday Night Raw that was on the night after Backlash. So we've had NXT take over Chicago, Asuka has retained her NXT Women's Championship, and at Backlash, Natalia made Becky Lynch tap out to the sharpshooter. So, on Monday Night Raw, on the 22nd of May, um, we have Alexa Bliss due to face Dana Brooke, but she gets Nia Jax to wrestle her match for her in order to keep her fresh for Extreme Rules. Alexa then attacks Dana Brooke after the match with a kendo stick, and Bailey runs down to try and make the save, and uh, Alexa Bliss and Nia Jax manage to escape. And later in that episode, Kurt Angle is seen on the phone he is having a conversation with Shane McMahon and they are discussing how excited they are about Wednesday and they look forward to meeting there on Wednesday then on Smackdown the next night Natalia is named the number one contender um, because she beat Becky Lynch at Backlash so she will have a title match at Money in the Bank pay-per-view against Naomi Naomi has a match later in the night um, against Tamina and Natalia jumps her after the match and what we also see are little skits of Charlotte and Becky arguing with each other because Charlotte is blaming Becky for the team's loss at Backlash. There's a little bit of friction there between those two. Now on the Wednesday on NXT, William Regal comes out and he introduces everyone to Kurt Angle and Shane McMahon and they enter the ring and they basically explain to William Regal and everyone there that they have come to NXT because they wish to discuss acquiring one of NXT's finest ever stars and that is Asuka. She comes out to the ring and there's a bit of a sort of tug of war with her in the middle Kurt Angle explaining to her why she should come to Raw and Shane McMahon explaining why she should come to Smackdown Live and William Regal kind of herds them all up and takes them into his office so that they can discuss this further. At this point, she is still an NXT superstar. She hasn't gone to Raw or SmackDown Live yet. They're under discussions. Now, the following week, on the 29th of May, um, Alexa Bliss again is due to wrestle, this time Mickey James, and again she makes Nia Jax wrestle for her so that she is not having to wrestle just before Extreme Rules. And again, after the match, after Nia Jax has won, she, um, Alexa is beating on Mickey James with a kendo stick. And again, Bailey comes down to make the save. However, this time she does actually manage to get her hands on Nia Jax. And she beats her out of the ring, saving Mickey from the beatdown that she's getting from Alexa Bliss. But Alexa Bliss again manages to escape um, on her own, um, gloating, because she was unharmed, gloating that she will win her match at Extreme Rules and retain her title. On Smackdown that week, on the 30th of May, um, Naomi is facing Carmella, and every single time she gets the upper hand, James Ellsworth coming in, he is trying to distract her, he's trying to get the referee's attention, and this carries on and carries on. Every single time he does this, Carmella then gets in a bit of offence. Naomi manages to get the upper hand again and in comes James Ellsworth again to break it up and the referee has had enough of this and he bans James Ellsworth from ringside. He sends him to the back and in that argument that they're having because obviously James Ellsworth doesn't want to go, go to the back because he's there to help Carmella. In that argument with the referee distracted, Natalia comes down 
and blindsides Naomi. Carmella is then able to pin Naomi and they both attack Naomi after the match. Later in the night we have a match between Charlotte and Tamina and Becky Lynch gets involved. She's trying she's there trying to help Charlotte, but Charlotte doesn't want her there. She doesn't need her there. She's able to do this on her own. Um, they have um, words with each other and because of that distraction Tamina is able to pin Charlotte in the confusion. Charlotte then is sort of verbally, she doesn't lay her hands on her, but she's verbally attacking Becky and blaming Becky again for her not winning. Then we come to Extreme Rules and nice and easy, Alexa Bliss beats Bailey and retains the Raw Women's Championship. After the match we hear Asuka's music and she runs down to the ring with her NXT title in hand and this causes Alexa Bliss to run out with her title and she is then hiding behind Nia Jax because she was there at ringside as well. Um, she's just sort of off her shoulder at the top of the ramp holding up her uh, Raw Women's Championship and Asuka is in the middle of the ring picking Bailey up and they have a bit of a stare down each holding up their title. Asuka with the NXT and Alexa with the Raw Women's title. Then on the next night on Raw, um, Alexa Bliss basically says, right, you're done, Bailey. You've had your chances. You've been beaten twice. Back of the line. Um, and she kind of dismisses the whole Asuka situation from the previous night. She said she'd never dare to come to Raw. She wouldn't dare challenge her. There's no way she would win. She would stay on NXT to keep away from Alexa Bliss. And Alexa Bliss later in the night is due to face Dana Brooke. And yet again, she gets Nia Jax to wrestle her match for her. Again, teasing the whole, um, you will be my next number one contender as long as you, you keep in my good books. And by this point, Nia Jax has gotten really annoyed at the fact that Alexa Bliss keeps promising her this and doesn't look any closer to becoming the next number one contender and she absolutely destroys Dana Brooke while sort of eyeing up Alexa Bliss as if to say if you keep messing me around this is going to be what I do to you. The next night on Smackdown on the 6th of June Shane McMahon comes out and he announces the first ever women's money in the bank ladder match. It'll be a fatal four-way, Becky Lynch, Charlotte, Carmella and Tamina because obviously Naomi will be defending her title against Natalia so it will just be a fatal four-way. It won't be a six or a seven-way like the men's matches normally basically because the roster is too thin. Um, not anything against the fact that six women shouldn't be in there but we want a women's title match as well and that takes the other two out of the equation. So it's a fatal four-way. And um, Carmella and Tamina play up the fact that because they are a team, they will easily be able to overcome Becky and Charlotte because they keep arguing with each other. And Becky and Charlotte have enough of this. They team up and they take out um, Carmella and Tamina and look strong at the end of it. And Becky then challenges all three members of the welcoming committee to a rematch from the match they had at Backlash for the next night on SmackDown. So it'll be a three against three, six women tag match again, the SmackDown Live before um, Money in the Bank. Now the following week on Raw, on the 12th of June, Kurt Angle comes out and he announces that there will be a tournament to decide the next number one contender for the Raw Women's Championship in a match against Alexa Bliss at Great Balls of Fire. And because she is the former champion, Bailey will receive a bye through the first round. And the tournament brackets look like this. In the first round, we have Mickey versus Nia Jax, Sasha versus Alicia Fox, Emma versus Dana Brooke, and there we see Bailey getting a bye through the first round. Now, on the 12th of June, Mickey faces it against Nia Jax. Nia Jax wins. The following week, Sasha is facing Alexa Bliss. Sasha wins that match. And Emma, in her first match back, beats Dana Brooke. So the semi-finals look like this. Nia Jax versus Bailey, and Sasha versus Emma. Now, because of the injuries in their match at Extreme Rules, 
Bailey is definitely not 100% here. Nia Jax basically pummels her. She just goes over her really convincingly, looking like a monster, straight into the final. And in the Sasha versus Emma match, Alicia Fox gets involved and costs Sasha Banks the win. So the final will be Nia Jax versus Emma. So it looks like Nia Jax is finally going to get her opportunity against Alexa Bliss. All she has to do is overcome Emma, who has only just come back from injury. So she's still not completely 100%. But Alexa Bliss, aware of this, sees Nia Jax as more of a threat and costs her the match. So Emma becomes the number one contender against Alexa Bliss at Great Balls of Fire. Now, Raw takes a bit of a backseat, and you'll see why as the story progresses. So we move on to the episode of SmackDown Live on the 13th of June. We get the Backlash rematch here, the six women tag of the welcoming committee, Carmella, Tamina and Natalia, facing off against Becky Lynch, Charlotte and the women's champion, Naomi. And again, Natalia has Becky Lynch locked in the sharpshooter, but this time, before she taps out, Charlotte is able to break the hold and Becky Lynch tags her in. But shortly thereafter, Natalia manages to get Charlotte locked in the sharpshooter. And while Becky Lynch is able to break the hold, she chooses not to, leaves the ring and allows Charlotte to tap out to the sharpshooter. She has completely turned her back on Charlotte and cost her the win. Now we move on to the Money in the Bank pay-per-view. Naomi is defending her title against Natalia and Natalia gets Naomi locked into the sharpshooter. Naomi manages to get to the ropes, but Natalia doesn't break the hold before the five count. She holds it on after that, after the bell's going. The referees have to drag her off and escort her out to the back. Naomi, because of the damage done to her back, she has to be carried out. She is in a bad way. Now, later in the night, we get the fatal four-way. Charlotte, Becky Lynch, Carmella and Tamina for the Money in the Bank ladder match. And just as the match is about to start, Shane McMahon interrupts the beginning of it and announces that there will actually be a fifth competitor. In comes NXT Women's Champion, Asuka. She has been added to the match. It's now a fatal five-way. And because of the problems between Becky and Charlotte, they take each other out of the match. Asuka is easily able to overcome Carmella and Tamina and interference from James Ellsworth. She wins the Money in the Bank briefcase. She has the NXT Women's Championship in one hand and she has the Money in the Bank briefcase in the other hand. She is victorious. Then over the next few weeks, before the next pay-per-view, we learn that Naomi has really injured her back and she won't be able to compete on SmackDown Live until the next pay-per-view battleground because of the back injuries inflicted by Natalia. And Becky and Charlotte's feud intensifies and culminates in a number one contenders match on the SmackDown Live episode before the pay-per-view battleground. Charlotte wins this match. She finally gets her opportunity again that was taken from her by the welcoming committee in May. So she is going to face Naomi for the title at Battleground. It'll be a one-on-one -on -one match between those two. And the whole time throughout these weeks, the commentators are playing up, will Asuka turn up at Battleground? Will she cash in her Money in the Bank briefcase? Is she even able to? Is she eligible to? Because she's technically not a member of the SmackDown Live roster. We do not see anything from Asuka at all during this point. She is still defending the NXT Women's Championship. She's still appearing on NXT, but we do not see her on SmackDown Live. Then we get to the pay-per-view battleground, and it's Naomi versus Charlotte in a one-on-one -on -one match. Naomi's first match back since Money in the Bank. Her back is still very, very injured because of the attack by Natalia, and Charlotte dominates her. She takes full advantage of this, and it looks like Charlotte's got the win, but Natalia interferes in the match. She attacks Naomi again. It's a disqualification. Charlotte does not win the title. Naomi leaves again broken, but still the SmackDown Live Women's Champion. And Charlotte, as you can imagine, is not happy. 
She tries to attack Natalia, but Natalia runs away and Charlotte is left in the middle of the ring without anything. She doesn't even manage to get her hands on Natalia and she did not win the title. Then we see as Natalia is exiting and Charlotte is left in the middle of the ring, Asuka appears on the Titantron. She's got the NXT title over her shoulder. She's got the Money in the Bank briefcase in her hand. And she just simply says to the women in the ring, I'll see you soon. Then over the next few weeks on SmackDown Live, before the pay-per-views of Brooklyn 3 and SummerSlam, we get video packages introducing the crowd to Asuka and all of her achievements in NXT. It lists the superstar she's beaten, all of her main title defences on each of the pay-per-views, and it just shows how dominant she has been in NXT, explains how long her undefeated streak is and just how dominant she has been within the NXT women's division. Then the week before SummerSlam we get a one-on-one -on -one between Charlotte and Natalia. It's a number one contenders match to determine who will go to SummerSlam to face Naomi for the title but because there's so much bad blood there they are feuding outside the ring and in the crowd and it's a double count out so Shane McMahon declares that we will get a triple threat match at SummerSlam Charlotte versus Natalia versus Naomi for the Smackdown Live Women's Championship then at NXT TakeOver Brooklyn 3 Asuka faces Nikki Cross for the NXT Championship and although there are other members of Sanity there Nikki Cross is not able to win. Asuka retains her title over Nikki Cross. And after the match, she announces to everyone that this will be her last night as an NXT performer. She and William Regal and Shane McMahon have come to an agreement and they have decided that it is time for Asuka to move on to the main roster and if she wants to keep her Money in the Bank contract, she has to give up her NXT Women's Championship, otherwise she will lose her Money in the Bank opportunity. So right there in Brooklyn, she hands back the NXT Women's Championship to William Regal, she leaves NXT undefeated, and the vacant NXT title will then be won later on at the next pay-per-view by Ember Moon. The next night at SummerSlam, Naomi is facing Natalia and Charlotte in a triple threat match, and Natalia wins that match. She manages to target Naomi's back and makes her tap out to the sharpshooter. And just as she's celebrating, we hear Asuka's music again. She runs down and cashes in her Money in the Bank briefcase and manages to pin Natalia. She is the new SmackDown Live Women's Champion the day after having to hand over the NXT Women's Championship. And then on the SmackDown Live after SummerSlam on the 22nd of August, there is an official coronation welcoming Asuka to the SmackDown Live roster and crowning her, officially crowning her, the SmackDown Live Women's Champion. And that is my booking of Asuka's debut on the main roster. I'll put a link in the description below for the WrestleTalk video so that you can see Ollie's booking and Luke's booking and decide out of which of the three of us you think booked it best. I have been that British guy and I will see you very soon. Goodbye.